Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today is from the Gospel lesson from John 6, verses 35 through 51. We pray. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, you know, most people these days have a smartphone or have some access to the internet. And with all the technology advancing, you would think that maybe people would be happier because they have all this wonderful technology. But we find that the reverse is true. Isn't that interesting? With all this technology, we think we're so smart, we're actually less happy. Uh, You can see this for yourself if you go to the internet and search for this article called The Sad State of happiness in the United States and the role of digital media. Again, the sad state of happiness in the United States and the role of digital media. What they found is back in 1988, most adults were fairly happy in the United States. But that went to a low in 2008 with the economic crisis. Now, it's just slightly better today, but far from the uh, peak happiness back in 1988. Well, what uh, is the cause of this decline in happiness? Well, they've done more extensive studies on young people, so we can get at the cause better with the young people. They've studied 8th uh, eighth grade, eighth graders and 10th graders. And what they found is that as internet hours go up, at, like this, like the slope of a roof, basically, the internet hours have gone up over about 10 years. Now, on the other hand, what has gone down, like about the slope of the roof the other way, what has gone down is sleep, happiness, and in-person social interaction. So, the young people, they're they're having much more time on the internet uh, compared to previous generations uh, over the last 10 years. But they're losing sleep, they're losing in-person interaction, and they're losing happiness. Now that's a very sad situation. So they've done some other studies just to to confirm is is this caused by this internet use. Well, let me give you one example. They found that girls spending five or more hours a day on social media are three times more likely to be depressed than non-users. Now that's significant. Girls spending five or more hours a day on social media are three times more likely to be depressed than non-users. So what we see is our young people are spending much more time on the internet, and they're not very happy. Now, how does this uh, affect the church? Well, one of those factors that has gone down is face-to-face interaction. In-person social interaction has gone down, and you know, that was one area where the church shined and does still shine today it's it's the people aren't coming to church is the problem but what what do we do what do we what do we do here we have face-to-face interaction we talk to one another we uh, worship together we do something together Uh, we have meals together so there's a lot of face-to-face interaction in the church and so people not coming to church is a problem leading to, to this decline in happiness So what we learn from this study is the importance of friendship, of uh, family, of doing things together, face-to-face interaction. And we learn that the internet is not the solution to happiness. Matter of fact, it's uh, a negative effect. Now what I'm not saying is to throw away the internet because it has a lot of benefits for us. But what I am saying is we need to realize that the face-to-face interaction is very important. Matter of fact, you are all invited to Danielle's birthday party today at 5 o'clock at my house. 
and you can have some good face-to-face -face interaction there. But uh, that's just one example of things that we need to do. We need to uh, get together and do things together. But beyond that, there is another factor that affects happiness, and that is our relationship with God. Now, this study didn't look at that, but we know this from our Gospel lesson for today. We find that in Jesus Christ we find true satisfaction. For Jesus said to them in John 6, verse 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Now Jesus, in making this statement, he's not talking about physical hunger or thirst. I can tell you that I've been a Christian all my life, but I have had times where I've been hungry and thirsty. He's not talking about that. He's talking about a spiritual hunger. He's talking about a spiritual thirst. He's talking about finding meaning, finding a joy in life. And I, I use that word joy rather than happiness because we do have happiness when things are going good, but not when things are going bad. But we can have a joy in Jesus Christ all of the time. Why? Because he is always there loving us. Because he gives us a home in heaven. And because he's with us even in the trials. So the point is, is, it is in Jesus Christ that we find true happiness, true contentment, true meaning in life, true satisfaction, true fulfillment. It's all in Jesus Christ. And part of that, then, as we get to know Jesus, we realize the importance of loving one another. And so we have that face-to-face -face interaction. So the point here is that you're not really going to find happiness on your smartphone or the Internet with technology. That's not where true happiness is found. Rather, true happiness is found in Jesus Christ and in loving one another. Our friends, our family, our church members, helping the poor and needy. That is where we find true meaning and happiness in life. Even as Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Yes, we find true satisfaction in Jesus Christ. You know, Paul in Philippians 4 made a great statement about joy. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, in good times and in bad. Because like I said before, happiness comes from the word happenings. In other words, maybe you're having a great time, you're, you're at a party. And, and you might be happy then, but then you might be dishappy or unhappy when uh, bad things are going on in your life. But what we have in Christ is a joy. We can rejoice in the Lord always because he loves us, because he's there for us in the hard times. He says, I'm with you always. And because he's given us a home in heaven. This gives us reason to rejoice in the Lord always. And Jesus goes on to explain that what we find in Christ is eternal life. It's not just a temporary happiness for this life. We do find joy for this life, no doubt about it, in Jesus Christ. But his greatest gift is this eternal joy, this home in heaven that he gives to us. And he goes, goes on to explain this in John 6, beginning at verse 36. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me, will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. I will raise him up on the last day. What a beautiful promise. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should not and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. Thank God. When we believe in Jesus Christ, we have eternal life. That's why we can have this wonderful joy, knowing that we are going home to heaven to be with Jesus in this perfect world forever. Why? Because he died on the cross for us. He paid for our sin on that cross. And through faith in Jesus Christ, you have forgiveness. You have that home in heaven above, that perfect home in heaven above. And that gives us great and eternal joy, knowing that 
one day Jesus will raise us up on that last day. He will raise up our bodies. And in the meantime, when we do die, we go to be with Jesus in paradise, even as he said to the thief on the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. So we look forward to that wonderful, beautiful, amazing home in heaven above with Jesus Christ. And that gives us great joy. We also know that it's because of Christ's mercy that we are saved. It's not because of anything we've done. We see this in verse 44. Jesus says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Again, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. God draws us to himself. He draws us to himself through the waters of baptism, through the gospel of Jesus Christ. God draws us to himself that we might believe in and know Jesus Christ. The faith that we have comes from God. It is a gift from God. We're saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ through faith. As Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Thank God. Our eternal life is a gift from Jesus Christ. So we have reason to rejoice no matter what we may be going through in life. So you're not going to find in technology true happiness, no. But you will find true joy, eternal joy in Jesus Christ. So how does this apply to our life? Well, one application is to make time for Jesus. Make time for Jesus because that's where true joy is found. Like I just talked about, these these teenagers are spending five hours on social media, five hours a day. I mean, that's unreal. Rather, what they need to do is they need to make time for Jesus. They need to be spending time with Jesus Christ, getting to know him through the word of God. Gathering together as Christians and studying the Bible, praying together, coming to church. These are the things that will give them true meaning and happiness. So make time for Jesus because we find true joy in Jesus Christ. True happiness, lasting happiness in Jesus Christ. St. Augustine, many years ago, has a very famous quote, and I'd like to read it to you. He says in his book, The Con St. Augustine's Confessions. Great are you, O Lord, and exceedingly worthy of praise. Your power is immense, and your wisdom beyond reckoning. And so we men, who are a due part of your creation, long to praise you. We also carry our mortality about with us, carry the evidence of our sin, and with it the proof that you thwart the proud. You arouse us so that praising you may bring us joy because you have made us and drawn us to yourself and our heart is restless until it rests in you. So in other words, Augustine is pointing us to the true source of joy. It's in a relationship with Jesus Christ through faith. Again, the last part of this phrase which is so important. Augustine says, of God, because you have made us and drawn us to yourself, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Yes, or put another way, as Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.